birds. And we have here with us our area director for J3, who, who is also taking care of Maida International Toastmasters Club. He is advanced communicator Go Li Chen Chun. Outside of Toastmasters, he's a managing consultant. He works a lot with talents and change, organizational change. Within Toastmasters, I have competed with him many times on the stage for the speech contest, and he has also won three district level contests. So with that, let us give a bit of applause to Advanced Communication Go. Okay, so we have heard about body language 55%, book of writing 38%, words 70%. <laughs> we call it limited edition. <laughs> Let me share a story with all of you. Any of you here been to Thailand? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Thailand? Okay. Which flight do you take? Which yeah. uh, hey, Mars. Asia. Asia, Mars. Okay, so I recently went to Thailand and I heard the air stewardess in Thai Airways is very pretty. So I decided to take Thai Airways. <laughs> Business class, because I can play my company. So I was seated there. I was seated there. Then the cabin opened. Come on, the trolley, do this girl. Yes, <laughs> so imagine the bronze jack is me. So walk to the, he walked to me and said, Sir, what you like? So what is the third choice? <laughs> but of course, I need to act cool a bit. So I said, uh, excuse me? Sir, <laughs> what you like? Coffee, tea, or sapalai? <laughs> so, I want to try my luck. I said, okay. Surprise. I didn't know what this package. Uh, coffee, not for me. Uh. Tea, I don't really like. Give me the third choice. <laughs> Sir, sapalai? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Put the hand inside the trolley. Pick up Sprite. Sir, Words. Words. You see, a, one word can change the whole meaning of the sentence. It can change the whole uh, emotion. It can make you. It can humiliate you and the people around you. It can make you feel embarrassed just because of that one word, miscommunication. And that is why today I'm going to learn about words. <coughs> of all my Toastmasters projects, the toughest for me is always words. Because I think we live in a country where we are not careful with our words. But the more you appreciate, the more you are conscious with the use of words, the better you are in not just speaking, but also thinking and feeling. So today, this is what we're going to cover today. First, to gain an understanding of the function and uses of the spoken words. <coughs> Second, to select precisely the right words required to communicate your ideas clearly, vividly and appropriately. Okay, so reflect on my story just now. And also avoid common mistake in word use. Okay, we're going to do a very simple activity. We are just going to take one minute. So, Justin, can you just prompt me when one minute is up? I'm going to show you a picture, and I want you to think what does the picture represent. Okay, for one minute. Now, you cannot talk. You cannot talk. I just want you to think. All right? One minute starts. Now, All right? Don't talk for one minute. about what you see. 
Okay, so one minute is up. Okay, so this table, one person, what do you see? One person from this table. Yeah. One word. No. And I can describe. You can describe. Yeah. It's a victory of a people. Victory of people. Okay. How about this table? Courage, determination, and victory. How about this table? It's a selfishness. Selfish. Selfishness. 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 This guy is having this conversation with his wife. Okay, okay, insincerity. Insincerity. Okay, this table? I would say that the man in the middle is trying to help the third person to reach to the face. Yes, okay. Again, okay. there is no right or wrong answer to this. The purpose why I'm going to do this is for the same situation, for the same situation, in that one minute of silence, you are actually thinking to yourself using words. You're thinking, okay, I think this picture means this. I'm, I, I think this. I think this table gave a very interesting answer, which is selfishness. So I think along the time during the one minute, you are also using words to make sense of certain image. Alright. So if you, your words can alter the reality of a situation. Okay. <coughs> The more description you put to, the more descriptive words you use to bring out that picture to life. Now let's do this activity again, but now two, three, four, five. Now again, describe this picture by forming uh, a more descriptive view of this. Now there's a flag. There is victory, there is a hand, a sport, and there is this little rock. Okay, let's take 15 minutes. So again, form using words, how would you describe this picture? For the second time, by referring to more things. 15 seconds. For 15 minutes, I go for two minutes. Yes, just 15 seconds. You see words? Actually, I was testing. I can see minutes. Ah, you all learn. Now we go. Okay, think. Later, we'll start from here all the way to there. Now, I want you to use words to describe it even more, give a more descriptive description of this. Okay? So let's start. Okay, I tell you what, any table ready? You can just describe this. Let's start with this table. Uh, to achieve certain goals, you have to work hard. Okay. And to achieve that goal, you need you need support and help from others. Wow, that's good. Okay, let's try this table.
Now, do you notice a difference between the first time you describe it and the second time you describe it? Yeah. The first time is courageous, victory, selfishness. It's just a one word, but what does it mean? But once you observe the true situation and then you use words to describe the goal, teamwork, reach out, even somebody mentioned about the rock as a challenge. So when you attempt your, your, the project later, find ways to describe that sentence even better. And today we're going to share with you how we're going to do it. Now, the relationship with the words we use. When we did the first activity, one minute of thinking, you are thinking in words. You are talking to yourself. You are making sense of that situation. Then later, we speak in words. So you express yourself through words. So you are translating what you're thinking so that you influence what other people are thinking. Okay, the last is we deal with words. Now, we deal with words, I will need two volunteers to come up. I wanted to pick Maria, but she's not around. Okay, I want the Toastmasters, which is uh, Rushtan, okay, and a non-Toastmasters. Non-Toastmasters, I think, ah, so Rushtan, you pick one potential member. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick one. Uh, why is that? Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. So you're here. Okay. Imagine you just came from work. Okay, so you're from there, baru sampai office. Okay, so you must have been two. And then, so you have a <laughs> you have a very important presentation to give. And then you heard about this thing called Toastmasters. Then you know Rushtan is a Toastmasters. Okay? So you're gonna ask him, why did you join Toastmasters? Okay? And then Rushtan, I want you to give re reply. This this reply, you just open it. Okay. So you act like you're very nervous, like you got a presentation, presentation, then you walk past, you say, Rushdan, Rushdan, and you ask him why you join those masters. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, action! Why did you join this one? Why did you I like those masters because it benefits me. Okay. How does it benefit me? Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, Two, one, action! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the Toastmaster, right? Yes. Uh, why did you join Toastmaster? Uh, because I am passionate about Toastmaster's program. Wow. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> I am passionate about Toastmaster program. It has positively changed the way I see myself. <laughs> okay, let's give up if we can. Now again, let's see the difference. <laughs> you see, the first, the first, when Rushdan responds, I like those muscles program because it benefits me. It, it, it's not rich, it's just I like those masters because it benefits me. That's why Faisal didn't get the prompt. Faisal. Faisal. Oh, spelling is not <laughs> Testing words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that's why you did not prompt him to have the prompt. Okay. Now, when he said that I am passionate about Toastmasters program, it has positively changed the way I see myself. Suddenly, the whole feeling towards the whole conversation changes. Just by changing certain words from like to passionate. Like, I like cooking. I'm passionate about cooking. It will affect the way you feel every morning. So here are some few examples of words that you can just change and it triggers different feeling and emotion. First, this one, I should do better next time. I must do better next time. From a should to a necessity. 
I must arrive to work early. Suddenly, the way you respond to the situation changes. This assignment is a challenge. This assignment is an opportunity. <clears throat> Again, this, if you are a leader one day, this conversation happens all the time. Even to yourself. How can I solve this problem? When you say, how can I solve this problem? You are focusing on the word problem. It limits the way you think. How can I overcome this roadblock? Suddenly it changes. How might we respond to this opportunity? Then the way you think changes. This, when you are talking to your staff, you are always late to work. It will benefit the team if you come earlier to work. Negative, positive. Don't forget to submit the report before 5 p.m. Please submit the report before 5 p.m. Here are some of the examples that you can, you can change your language you use to yourself. Especially, I like the first one. I should, well, I must. So we, we have a Toastmasters meeting every second and fourth week. So usually when it comes to timing, sometimes we relax a little bit. I think we should start on time. But one meeting, our team, we change it to from a should to a must. All of a sudden, everybody collectively follow the time. So again, from should to must. So these are some of the words. So why words matter? And I got this from JC. Until today, I still can remember this phrase. The quality of the words you use determines the world you walk in. Right? Think about it, right? Think about it. Whenever we are with our senses, what we hear, what we see, what we feel, what we smell. Those senses doesn't have meaning. It doesn't have meaning. It's just senses. It's just an experience. Like for instance, when you do public speaking, when you go up on stage, your legs shiver, you see all the eyes on you, and then your throat is dry. It doesn't have meaning. It only has meaning once you put a word to it. This is public speaking. Then for the rest of your life, every time you think about the word public speaking, you remember this moment. That's why you always fear public speaking. So if you're consciously using the right words, it will affect how you live your life. Because senses has no meaning, but how you attach those experiences, the senses using words, will determine how you live your life. So these are the four uses of words. The first, words act, can act as a label. Okay, now let's do something very simple. This is an apple. Apple. Okay, label. This is an apple. Okay, apple. Okay, think of the apple right now. Okay, your apple green or red? Red. Red. Your apple green or red? Green. Green. Different or? Right? Although I add a label, apple, I think some of you, apple is my phone now. <laughs> okay. Or some people they may process it as A P P L E the word apple. So when I label it, it's still not clear. Red apple, green apple. Which is why beyond just a label, words can be used to describe and clarify. Right? If I say this is a red apple, and then suddenly everybody thinks of red apple. So when you do your speech, you can say something. This is a this is an experience, okay? So good experience, bad experience, is still experience. So you should add more descript, right? Describe it and clarify it. This is an amazing experience. So scrutinize sentence by sentence. There's always a way to make it clearer. This one, words can spark images and emotion. Okay, this one, the mothers in the crowd today. Every time when you're a kid, let's say Ahmad, you want to come down for dinner? Amat! Satu! Dua! Dua setengah! <laughs> right? So that image will always stick to them. So every time you say, Satu! Or one! Two! Then they automatically do it really. Because again, that experience, they attach a meaning in the words you use. Okay. Words can make attitude permanent. So every time when your staff or your, your employees do something good, and you say, hey, you did great. And automatically, you reinforce the behavior. Because there's a reward. Whenever I come early to work, I do something, I give something on time, my boss will say, you did great. So the more you do it, the more that attitude becomes permanent. And this is very important for evaluation. 
So whenever you evaluate your staff, even when you evaluate the speech, always remember of the choice of words you use, because that will reinforce certain behavior. So to attend your assignment, here are some tips that you can follow. Later, I will write it on a sheet of paper and I will just paste it. Uh, first, whenever you scrutinize the sentences in your speech, oops, be vivid. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you smell? Right? I was walking at the Pasar Malam and I smelled durian. So oh, he's smelling durian really, right? <laughs> So, be vivid. Second, be specific. What color? Red apple? Green apple. What size? The big red apple. What did he? Yellow durian. Yellow durian. <laughs> yes, yellow durian. A big yellow durian. Seven big yellow durian. What did he? Of course, you have percentages and you also have time. Right. Last Saturday at 2 p.m., I went to the Pasamala to buy seven big yellow durian. Right. There is no way to misinterpret that line. Be simple. I think it's straightforward. Always be simple. Don't use jargons. Keep it simple because it's not what you say. It's how the other party interpret the words you use. Okay, be descriptive. You can use things like, oh, my heart was racing like a bullet train, similarly as fast as, as slow as, as excited as. Okay, you can use this when you attempt the assignment, the project data. Okay, so any questions so far? Clear. <laughs> this top student. <laughs> any questions so far? If you don't have, I will be around. I think we have Sarah who just walked in. I think she's very good with her English. So do you utilize her. <laughs> Dinesh, um, yeah, all the mentors today speaks really good English. So you can always use a thesaurus. Instead of saying, the process is smooth, change it to the process is seamless. Different feeling. But the process is effortless. Different feeling. Okay? So challenge yourself, use more descriptive words, Use the dictionary, use the thesaurus, ask around, replace certain words to bring the, the speech to the next level, make it clearer, make it more descriptive, more vivid, more simple. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.